Yeah, I'm pretty impressed uh, with, I mean, 72 were on the roster, 43 showed up, so about three quarters of it came to step up at least for the for the challenge where in years past you could always slash that number in half to a quarter. So uh, the amount of uh, participants that showed up was uh, impressive and some impressive people on the roster. So, um, you know, there was a, a certain vibe. I think we all have, we know most of them, some obviously some repeat offenders uh, coming back at it. And, um, you know, it was definitely an impressive, impressive roster. Mindset. Mindset. That's, That's their choice. Way. That was their choice. Yeah. I think in the beginning, we could just, as we were, you know, we were lining them up and we were initially getting them formed up, you could just see in their eyes that the, the some majority of them, from what I saw, even though there were impressive GRTs, athletes, participants that showed up, you could just see right through their soul, through their eyes, that a lot of them were just not there mentally. It, it appeared. You know, every se selection class has a, a vibe to it, right? Mm -hmm. And you, you, you see that, you get that energy from that, you pick up on that energy. And this class by far, lack that energy of like you look at some like chad malone's classes mark clems alex sandoval doug Schreer, doug Schreer. that had that, they had energy mm -hmm. energy so definitely could uh, see that was a little bit lacking a little bit of uh um i think uh what would you reserve people were in reserve cool. not ready to keep it all on the line Now just to back up a real, just for a moment, it's, yeah. we don't actually, like, we, we talk about it, you know, joking around, all black class, whatever, but it's like, we sit for weeks and, you know, get together on Zoom and we dissect this plan. We, have, we create this plan. And the plan is never to go out there and just drop as many people as we can and, and oh, black class, it. like, that's not it. Like, we have a set curriculum that we're following and, you know, that is, you know, a mastermind of all of us together from our respective backgrounds and it's the black class having a black class isn't the objective it's to get through the curriculum and see who's left standing that meets you know that standard so it's almost sad to see a black class i mean it is sad to see a black class because you you see all these or, you know you look at the roster you say okay you got all these powerhouses you've seen some people that are coming back at it again and you're like okay this is maybe this is going to be their time you know to to shine and you get there and then you get this, and there's a bit of uh, emptiness to, to to see that, you know. Like you said, we you know we joke a little bit about it, but we you know we have plenty of Zoom calls. We dissect this. We take all our backgrounds mm -hmm. and put it into the curriculum, our experiences, and then to to get to this this point, and then just see that all just tumble down. You want to see the person who has what it takes to pull it out of them and finish. Um, I think I think there's not ever not everyone has the ability to pull that out um, to see that person dig down beyond where they've ever dug before and pull it out is very rewarding um, as a, as a cadre. Um, so when when you don't see that happen, you invested a lot of time uh, in the planning this and then. Um, yeah, like, uh, like Adam said, it's, the goal is not black class. The goal is maintain the standard. I think in terms of like go ruck itself and the event itself selection, like every year in the past that I've been doing it, you know, the expectation is, you know, Hey, who's going to pass this year? Right. Um, you know, having black class this year. To me, it's like, okay, it serves as like the integrity, right? It's letting folks know that, hey, you know, this is for real. Like, you gotta train when you come here. The expectation is that someone's gonna pass and who's gonna pass. This proves that GORUCK has standards still. Like, we are letting the folks know who are gonna try to <clears throat> attempt class 024. Like, if you don't do the work, the integrity of selection is very real. Like, show up. And you prepared. have to come correct. Yep. You have to come correct. You can't come 
having an injury from like a month ago, two weeks ago, whatever the case may be, like you have to be at your apex of your training when you show up here because too often, too many times, it's like, oh, I had a slip disc a month ago or I rolled my ankle doing something a week ago. It's like immediately you have to have like the integrity and self-awareness to know that you're already steps behind the game. So all your training, all your planning, all your preparation, you have to come correct because if you don't, this is what we get. This is what we see. And, and I'll, I'll, I'll to, to, to add to that, you, you were doing the medical check-in and I don't know how many numerous. Uh, I have a back injury from a month ago. Like, what are you thinking? I mean, that's ridiculous. What, I mean, a month ago, you know, a couple weeks ago, I, you know, it's not a pity party. Uh, you know, take Moltrin, face out. But why are you at, this is the, you have to be at your apex. This is, you're an apex predator when you're coming to this event. And to come here, say, oh, I, I've got this injury, and think that any of us are going to look at it as a, a sympathy is not, that's not, I mean, that's not that's realistic. Not that's, that's not our not, nature. Not, not. Yeah, that was, uh, we saw a lot of that, what we thought were heavy hitters. Like, okay, <clears throat> expectation is that if somebody's going to make it through, this candidate will probably have a good chance. And they and come to find out that they were injured. There were several who I thought for sure were going to make it at least to the 24-hour part, didn't. And it was because they came with an injury, a pre-existing pre condition that they had nursed. And, okay, I think I can make it through, but they couldn't. Selection is all about overcoming adversity. And although we hate to see a black class, there's value in failure. So, you know, as a GRT, if you didn't pass, you know, selection, you know, some candidates will let that failure define them. Others will do some reflection and figure out what they need to do next time and make those adjustments. We have several previous finishers that came back multiple times before they were ever able to finally pass selection. So there's value in failure. It's all about what you do with that failure. That's not yeah, that's an that's individual okay. yeah, decision. Yeah. I would, from my perspective, they have what it takes to finish. They are right there. They just need to do some again some self-reflection and make a couple adjustments and i think they're they'll be right there but that's a decision that they're going to have to make on their own because you you've got to be you've got to want to do it for yourself you can't do it for any other reason because it's too hard it's too demanding physically and mentally and i know a lot of candidates show up and say i'm ready physically and mentally but i doubt as this black class shows very few really are and they don't know until they're tested at that limit that they've never been tested at before because you don't train to that extreme right the whole you don't know what you don't know Correct. yeah, yeah I, I would uh also add to that you know a lot of the during the debriefs when you talk to the the, the participants candidates that vw you know and they say oh, how do you train for this you know up, up to a certain point you know the physicality right, you cannot train to, you have to almost, you have to be mentally, you have to give it, you have to, if you have a family that kind of takes second note, this is what you put ahead of you, this is what you will absolutely commit to and have to have that understanding. You, like I said, you can only train so much, right? Physically, you will get to a, a certain point. Mentally, you have to be totally switched on and ready to give it your all and take it beyond and, and lock out the noise. Because it's gonna be, we're, we're gonna get in your head, we're gonna figure it, we're gonna, we're gonna see it. Oh, like selection, finish, nice. like selection finish, Doug Sharon, which is our way he said in the past is, mm -hmm. you have to train to the point physically to where it becomes mental. And yeah, I don't yeah. think we saw one person in that formation actually step up to this event that had done that and just didn't see it, didn't observe that. Again, I think <clears throat> selection means different things to different people. Some GRTs will show up with the intent of being a finisher. Some will show up with the intent of just challenging themselves, seeing how far they can go, what they can endure, you know, trying to identify weaknesses or gaps that they may have. And those are those individuals that are probably going to be the one and done. But back to what I said previously, there's value in failure. Um, you don't have to finish selection to be a winner. You can show up, compete, 
learn something about yourself and then move on. For, for me, it's about being willing to show up, being willing to put your name on the line and show up. Uh, you know, 73 said they'll show up, only 43 showed up. It's those 43 that I have all the respect for because they were the ones that were willing to come out here and put it on the line. Yeah, regardless of you know having an injury a month ago, they just said, "Hey, look, you know, I, I put my name to the to the to the line," and and they showed up. Uh, a couple of the ones I out briefed yesterday that had been previous selection finishers. Hey, I got a little bit farther than I did the last time. That's that. Hey, great. Okay, you know, so hammer at it. You know, there is value added in the sense of coming back at it, if that's what you want. Like sometimes, hey, I got to this goal and that is my pinnacle, right? Now I'm gonna move on to something else. So I guess it, it really, like I said, it comes down to the individual and their, and their wants. Because it is about, to a certain extent, anything, anything we've done in our, uh, to, to attain the status we've done, to get onto a team, to, to it is a little bit about what we wanted to accomplish, to see you know, hey, do I have the right stuff to be on a team, to be next to these guys, shoulder to shoulder, and earn my spot? So do I have what it take? I won't fail. JC, I won't fail. Cleve, I won't fail Roger. You know, so that, that's, you know, you're testing yourself to see if I can be if equal I break the standard guys, amongst and if these I ranks. can make a standard. So that's the equation. It's two different, <clears throat> two different mindsets mm -hmm. uh, there. There's the the mindset, I made it further than I thought I would, mm -hmm. which is an absolute win. Like mm -hmm. that, that is a personal win, mm -hmm. but to finish selection, that cannot be the mindset. It is, I will do whatever it takes mindset. Right. It's 48 hours of, you know, just straight beat down. And how do you mentally gauge that before you show up? So you show up, you do the work, you get X far. Now you've accomplished that. You know that you can do that again. So there is definitely value there uh, to whatever point you made it. Uh, you know, you come back, I've got this much already You're in your mental brain housing group. Now I can get a little more or hopefully the rest. But like Andy said, you know, the goal is not to finish selection, just do whatever it takes to be standing there at the end. It's a high level of empathy uh, to some degree, uh, at least personally for myself, I think back in, um, and some of my training and remembering back where the physical is just gone. You know, you're, like the physical part of you, like you were pretty well tapped out. You're riding off of just pure mental at that point. And um, having my instructors and, and cadre yelling at, yelling at me, um, also knowing their backgrounds and where they came from. And uh, you look at, the, at these candidates and you can actually see it in their eyes when they're they're teetering that fence of uh, I'm gonna do whatever it takes and then they start wavering you, you can see them start playing that mental ping-pong game um, so you want you want to see that candidate that's gonna gonna hunker down and just take whatever you got you can see it in their eyes that they're not gonna they're not gonna give in I mean from a from a category's perspective I look at it as when I go in and, you know, I put the game face on and I, I start becoming the cadre for a selection. I look and think about my training, my past, like when I went through my selection process and, and told myself I had to pass this because this was my job. This is what I was going to do for the next X amount of years. Like, this is what I want to do. This isn't something I just want to attain for 48 hours and then take it and then shelf it and then go on with my life. I look at that as when I train and, I, and I, I put these candidates to the test, I don't take that same mentality as I had, right? I have to curb it down a little bit and say, hey, all right, these guys are doing it for 48 hours. I did it for 21 years, but I have to be able to make sure that they still meet the requirements, the <clears throat> checks and balances that we all came agreed with on the standards. So it's not like I am saying, hey, this is what I did for 20 years and this and that, and you know, I went to combat. I don't expect that from them, I don't. But I do expect them to come prepared 
and to give it their all from my perspective. And when I don't see 110%, then I feel that I'm being cheated, right? And I just like, well, you're not ready to go. Like, you know, because I was expected to give it and I was expected to give it for 21 years because that's what I signed up to do. That was my job. From a cat perspective, I don't, I don't like, you know, when, when, I, when I'm on the drain, the selection event, I don't see it that way. I have to, you know, kind of say, hey, 48 hours, what are you gonna do with it when you're done? You're probably just gonna take it, you know, shelf it, say, hey, I'm a selection finisher, I'm gonna come back every year and have fun with it. You know, that, that's my point. Selection's all about overcoming adversity. And the first thing that an individual has to overcome is the uncertainty of selection. So I think back when I went to selection, there was only a few knowns. You knew that you were gonna to have to take a PT test, you knew you were gonna be walking a lot, and you knew you were gonna be carrying a lot. So we've designed our selection around that. So the GRTs that come to participate, they know they have to take the APFT, the push-ups and sit-ups. They know there's gonna be a 12 mile, run, uh, 12 mile ruck in there. And then they know they're gonna be carrying and lifting a lot of stuff. Outside of that, it's all unknown. They don't know what order it's necessarily gonna happen in. So overcoming that uncertainty that I remember when I went through my selection, as cadre, we use that against you know, the participants because they have no idea what's gonna happen. Um, and that leads, as the event progresses, you see that start to play mental games with the participants. They start to break down because they don't know if they can do the next iteration. That's what we talk about. You can't be just physically tough. You gotta be mentally tough as well. And everybody thinks they are until they get here. Yeah, I, I would say to add to that as well is like, you, know, you have to learn to live in the unknown. Uh, that's what special, any special operator is, has to kind of learn to live in uncertainties because things aren't always black and white. There's sometimes there's very minimal guidance. Sometimes there's very explicit guidance. Um, and you can't compare yourself to what's around you or who's around you. And you see that a lot in the, in the selection process, uh, both in the real selections and in, in our selections. You know, you had these guys that were like, you know, I, I remember some huge monsters going in, uh, yoked, and they were walking the sh to the shack of shame, you know, because they were trying to compare themselves to what somebody was doing to them to their left or right. Uh, we saw it in this election, you know, uh, candidate so X was comparing themselves to the other candidate. No, I wasn't performing. It's not about what that person's doing, it's what you're doing. You, know, you have to be able to, hey, that, it's you. You have to get in your world and do what, give it your all, mentally and physically. I personally think this event teaches more lessons than any other event of the year. Yeah. It's a right to the individual that shows up to it because I don't believe it is a failure. I believe every one of these individuals that got set back left here with a valuable lesson. And whether it was, oh, I hit a new threshold, you know, I made it to a new level in my life, or I learned something new about myself, that's a step in the right direction. You know, I think that there's more lessons taught here at the individual level through all phases of this where people can have this self-awareness and then be able to go back and have this self-reflection to where there is real growth because the other times where you know we're doing the memorial event excuse me <clears throat> and you know we're honoring the fallen and we're teaching the lessons that they went through and you know the teamwork the leadership the communication but we come back here to go rook selection this is very much those individual lessons to the individual you know and it doesn't matter it's it's constant it's all the time you know it's like one three sucks at low crawling. Well, there's a lesson. Got to go back and low crawl, you know? And it's just one of those things at any given point, at any given time to any one of these individuals, something might stick, something might resonate, and it ultimately, potentially, could change and benefit their life, whether they earn that patch at the end of 48 hours or not. This is one of the, in my opinion, one of the biggest events that affords the biggest opportunity for growth. I think it's, it's hierarchy too. I mean, there's a lot of, um, go to a cat some, I won't say easier, but less challenging events that are challenging for the people that do them. Whether you're the 5K star, the 10K star, you start moving into the 12K star, I mean, excuse me, the 12 mile star, 
26 mile star. We have the basics and the lights, if it's a custom, uh, which are easier, uh, so to speak, compared to, say, the tough. But then you can start stacking them. Okay, now I can challenge myself doing a tough than a basic. Okay, that was doable. I didn't think I could do that. Well, let me try to do a heavy. Uh, then there's the HTB finishers. Uh, then, okay, what do I do after I do a HTB? Well, if I'm still in the itch to go further, that's where selection's at. It, it offers, Go Look offers the ability for somebody, uh, a civilian that doesn't want to or can't join the military and, and push themselves beyond what normal people would do. This is their opportunity. Uh, we provide them that opportunity. Yeah, I love Go Rock events. I mean, to go out there and lead a team event, like I consider myself a team guy. Like, I, I endure the motivation that comes from running team events. Um, but running Go Rock Selection is, is ultimate to me because I get to see that one-on-one that -on -one performance. I get to see that athlete give it their all. Like, I am, I am experiencing like exceptional work being done visually in person live that's what excites me the most to watch that that the individual or individuals doing work and performing at their best that to me is, is is awesome to see in person it really is and me pushing them past their limits and and them going past their limits that motivates the hell out of me it really does and i love it and i'm gonna be a little selfish on this but you know what i like getting these guys together physically uh, and, and uh, the energy, um, you know, some of them we've served, Larry, we went through selections together, Barbosa actually put me through selections, um, was one of the selection, one of the selection cadre I had, you know, we've all worked together, I mean, it's JC and, and Adam been around since 2014, 2015, Aaron and I in the Ranger Regiment together, so I mean, uh, you know, it, it kind of brings that uh, Jason, we were in uh, during my first tour in Iraq, you know, 06, so, or 07, I'm sorry. Um, you know, it, it all brought it, it brings us together. So there's that as well. You know, we talk to each other, you know, on Zoom calls, phone calls, and, and then there's those big events sometimes we can all get together, get together on and I love This is probably one of the biggest events where we can kind of all get together. So there's a little, it, it's it's that too, you know, a little, maybe a little selfish, but uh, you know, that there's a, there's a chemistry that we have that I think also brings to the uh, the Go Ruck selection, and, and like JC hit it on the head, you know, seeing these are the, the majority of the selection candidates have done a multitude of events. So we've watched them through the years grow, right? I mean, you know, we can name a few of those candidates that came out on this last one. We've seen over the years coming out to events and, 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 and growing. So that's, that's pretty motivational. Um, I would say that, uh, you know, this selection event was a little bit odd in the sense that there was a lot of first time, like I'd never touched a sandbag, heard anything about Go Ruck, to include one international guy dropping and never done Go Ruck event. So that, you know, makes you scratch your head and say, wow, you know. So uh, there must be something about it that would entice somebody to step off, uh, not knowing anything about Go Ruck, to want to attempt this especially with this cast of crew. Cool. Hey, at like a personal level, I, mean, I think back to World War II barracks at Fort Bragg, I think back to Camp Call, I think back to the Chow Hall line. I mean, this event smells to me like that, right? Like the fear mm -hmm. that we all had, like the unknown, you guys have touched on all that. You know, I slept 12 hours last night. Like just pure and utter exhaustion. I haven't slept like that since I was 15 and grown an inch a month, right? Um, like this event is just emotionally draining in a way that the cadre fog of even an HTB or something isn't. For me, it's because I sit and think back to the people that I, that I went through some of those courses with. And there are some great times, but when I start digging those graves up, there there's some... I mean, there's some guys that aren't here anymore too. And like for me, that makes it, you know, kind of a religious experience of sorts. Like what, what's the, you know, which is just emotionally exhausting, right? Like who do you guys think about? Or what do you think about 
because you, you got to go to a dark place at this event. Is that yeah. fair? Yeah. yeah. Like, what, what's your dark place that you got to go to? Like, what, what do you dig up that you're like, I see the lumps in your throats right now. You know, you're thinking about the same thing that I go through. Like, what is it? Is it worth it? Are you glad you got to go back to that place? I always bring, bring back the memories of brothers who ain't here. Yeah, the way I think about it is, you know, this is a, <clears throat> a special event. It's the flagship event, and because of all the selections that we have gone through, uh, first of all, we preach team all the time. Team is everything, but it takes individuals to be on a team. You have to select the proper individual for the proper job, and they have to be put through the, you know, the crucible to do it. And then you get to be on the team. Uh, but not until you've been uh, individually selected, weeded out from, you know, hundreds of others. And, uh, you know, here we have, then we come upon our team who has already been there before we even got there. They've learned their lessons. They've gone on their deployments. They've done their rotations. And now you're the new guy. And then you bring your uh, experience into that team and, and, and gel together. But, you know, these are lessons that are learned hard fought from uh, um, previous generations, uh, Vietnam uh, veterans taught me growing up and before them was World War II veterans and, and so on and so forth, all the way back to American Revolution. And so here we are sitting here with all of that experience and knowledge uh, collectively from uh, what, 247 years of uh, American blood and patriotism. And we wanna share that, we want to give that to the individual who is able to come and take it from us. But the standards, it's never gonna change. It's, 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 not, it's not easy. So you should come, come prepared if you want it, because what's on the other side of it is, is worth having. But, but I'm talking about you guys. Like, like Raj, what do you dig up? What do you dig up inside of yourself? You know, I mean, selection really represents to me, you know, the, the antithesis of the lie of comfort, you know, like there's this, uh, there's this misconception in culture that, that comfort is success, you know, and I really feel that, uh, what we're doing here, you know, bridging, you know, like our culture of special operations to the civilian world, like what, what value does that have, you know, and facing pain and discomfort that's that's how you grow and i feel that uh this 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 is a celebration of that mm -hmm. you know and and uh, you know when i joined the military uh you know I, I i gave myself my own mission statement it was like i want to grow mentally physically and spiritually you know from involving myself in a lifetime of special operations and you know candidates when they show up here you know it takes a lot of courage like this is not if you show up to something this event as an ego dance like you're not going to make it through it um mm -hmm. the candidates that show up for this they're trying to grow that those are the people that that successfully complete something like this you know it's it's a measure of your resolve and your intent uh, if your resolve and your intent are not equal or virtuous you're you're going to falter you know, and all of us have breaking points, you know, and, and uh, I think selection is a celebration of the human spirit. You know, like what, what is that in someone that bec can become indomitable, that you cannot force them to physically or mentally falter in any way? You know, and that's, that's such a subjective thing. Um, every year it's different. You know, the weights are, you know, it's not a mathematical calculation, but, uh, you know, us all having seen that, you know, like that tiger smile, you know, to look in, you know, someone's eyes, you can see if they're, they're comfortable or not, you know, and, but like for you, why is this hard? You know, we, we talked a little bit out on the beach out there, you know, selection is, you know, to, to put another human being through this stuff, like I never feel as if, JC kind of touched on it too, I don't ever feel like I'm doing anything that I don't ask of myself. Like we're just being so hypercritical of everything that someone's doing and trying to create this wave of just 
hyper-focused, you know, just pulling someone apart to try to find their weakness. And once we find that weakness, we're just going to keep tugging at it and tugging at it and tugging at it. Um, that's, that might seem savage, that might seem brutal, uh, but that's, that's how we grow as individuals. So when I'm doing that to someone, um, you know, and you were mentioning it too, you know, there's this empathy that happens. I know what they're going through. We've all experienced that, you know, and, and uh, it's, it's almost like just recharging or, you know, reaffirming the things that, that I love in this physical mortal world, you know, just, I can be as severe on them as I am on myself. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think the reason that we can stomach it is we all know that combat, you know, nothing's fair about that, mm-hmm. you know, and you have to prepare mentally, physically, and spiritually as much as possible for the injustice of violence in combat, you know, that, that unjust violence. And so these people are just doing it to grow, to understand that. We're doing it to bridge the gap from our cultures to, to, their. to theirs. Yeah. And, and, uh, it's absolutely a reverent event, you know. So a human being that's willing to allow you to have them surpass their physicality to touch their emotional state is a very powerful thing. And this is the apex event that we have to celebrate that. So I just, I mean, it's reverent to me, um, not only of, you know, just remembering combat fatalities that I, you know, dealt directly with or team members that were killed in combat, you know, it's, it's that severity, it's that reverence, you know, to that moment that you're willing to try to meet that unjust medium with your vulnerability. That, that's powerful. Mm-hmm. And it just, it's emotional for us as well as it is for the candidates because we know what that's like. We know what, what that's like to, to be at that late hour and you're about to break emotionally, you know. Uh, physicality, we're just using these physical tools to touch something inside them. And, you know, you asked a couple of questions earlier about, you know, can someone fail selection? You know, it's still a beautiful thing to meet your limits, you know, and uh, all of us, you know, we're as harsh as we can because that's what we're there to do. We're there to represent the, the edges of their mortality. And, and, People hit that. Now it's a beautiful thing. It's it is awesome to see an indomitable spirit physically and mentally. Um, and unfortunately, we didn't see that this year. You know, I mean, we all want a hero, right? Everybody wants a hero, but um, you know, this is selection. You know, and you know, it's not peaches and cream. You know, not everybody gets a, a participation trophy in this. Mm-hmm. You know, and this is this is our apex thing that, that is it's attainable, but it's unattainable. You know, it's all, all within us. Jason, it's, uh, it's uh, challenging for myself personally. Um, we talk about the standard. Uh, the standard is not something that you, you hit once and you've achieved it. Uh, to me, I think the standard is a, it's, it's something you strive for every day. I think back personally, like where, uh, where my heart, my head, uh, and everything was at when I was preparing to go through my training, when I went through it, and uh, and then you achieve it, and then your mindset can go a couple different directions. You can go into I've made it mindset. Uh, you can humble yourself and remember what it took for you to get there, and that humility and reverence for that can allow you to continue to grow. So I come here and not only am I as a cadre challenging the person, the candidate that's in front of me to maintain the standard, but I'm also reminding myself of the standard in my own life. Mm-hmm. And it may not look like a, like a physical event, like this mm-hmm. one specifically, but my family, work, business, like what, what is it that I'm chasing after? Your, your emotion sets your, your goal and your vision. You set that. And then you almost remove emotion again to then get there. So for this event, a candidate that is emotionally moved by this event or, want, or wants, wants this event so bad, you set that goal. But then when you're here and all those emotions are, are flooding around in your head and everything in you is telling you to quit and, and you don't want to do it, you need to remove that emotion and 
Like, I will do whatever it takes. I don't care what my body's telling me. I don't care what that voice in my head is telling me. I mean, this happen. I mean, I mean, like Jason said, it's like for me, <clears throat> from a cat based perspective, I'm emotionally drained after this weekend. I am emotionally, mentally drained. Like when I drive back or fly back home, I am, I am done ski. Like I, I don't want to think about a, a Gorok event for like a week or two. I really don't. Like to be cat right here at Selection, you know, I have to flip a switch. I come here all happy. Hey, what's up, guys? I haven't seen these brothers, you know, at said next event. You know, I'm happy, jolly. We're smashing beers pre pre selection. But man, when, when, when I when I flip that switch in my mind, I'm evil as fuck. Like I have to be, because I am making sure that those candidates get every ounce of what they pay for. Because I feel like I'm cheating them if I don't. So to me, I go, I dig deep and I, I'm borderline psychotic, right? I know that. I have to be. Because I feel like the person that's going to stand at the very end in front of this American flag across from me is deserving of that patch. I really do. And... That is why, for me, I dig in my mind to find out, you know, all my combat deployments, and I, I, I bundled all up into one weekend, and I, I give it to said candidate, because they deserve it. They deserve, you know, they deserve everything that I give to them. And then when it's all done, I flip that fucking switch back, and I hug them. We hug it out. We're going to smash beers together. We're going to be lifelong friends. We're going to be social media buddies. He's going to invite me to his hometown. If I drive through and I'm going to stay at his house, he's going to stay at my house. Or... And then next thing you know, I'll see him next year and <laughs> we'll smash beers again. We'll have fun. That's what, how I see as a cadre for me. I mean, I, I have to go to a dark place. Like I have to be that evil guy, you know, for those 48 hours. And it's hard. It's challenging. It really is. Like I have to emotionally break myself down. And when I get home, I have to break, you know, bring myself back. But that's, you know, I, that's, what, that's what they get. That, you know, I think that's what they get from me. You know, Rich, yeah. we, um, we did selection uh, last year in Bellbrook. Mm -hmm. And it, for myself, it, 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 it pulls this dark place out of me that it's almost unbearable. Um, it is and it's compartmentalization yeah. to go back in some of these places knowing that's like you call in danger close you put your fucking name on that and it's like no matter fucking what like we're gonna persevere through this shit and to go from downrange to here and for people that maybe they couldn't for whatever reason join the military or yeah. You know, this is something that they just want to test within themselves. And it, 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 I have to go to that spot to where being overrun again, you know, getting hit up in like a fucking L-shaped ambush from three different cardinal directions. It's like, you want this motherfucker? Come get it. Because I'm going to fucking go home. And it's your decision. And how bad do you want to fight? And how are you going to fucking leave this event? And... These types of events afford me the opportunity to dig into that, compart that compartment where I can pull some of this out of me in a healthy way that potentially could benefit somebody else. Because, you know, you go back to some of these places that we've all walked, that we've all done, and it's, it's, it's some of these things that you see in movies, you read in books, and it looks flashy in social media, but it's like, you know, there's a human factor here. And no matter the bravado or fucking whatever that you see or you hear, like, you know, for myself, I go home from every single Goat Rock event and I have to take time to find myself again mm. because I, I can't go back to who I was on the battlefield. That's a different piece of me. And the people that I'm connected to, they don't deserve to, to have that. You know, and that's what we, we pre, you know, speed, surprise, violence of action. Like, that, that's life. That's life, yeah. And we have to go into that spot in order to bring out 
the genuine atmosphere and the spirit from within to even, you know, get that patch. And it is one of those things to have to go into that compartment to, to, be, to allow yourself to be vulnerable enough to see those demons and then share that with others in a way that I don't even know how to articulate at this time. I was always say that uh, selections is the dark, it's the dark side of go ruck. Uh, to a certain extent, it brings out our dark sides. Um, and I don't necessarily mean it in an evil or mean way, but uh, it does bring, because when you live in that world of combat and from the units that we come from where that's the way of life, um, you, you know, and we, we, we have these civilians that come and, you know, we know they're not trying to be operators, right? But, but we're trying to give them a piece of that. You know, this is just, this is 48 hours compressed, right? What do you, you know, how do you take 21 days, 30 days, you know, a lifetime? Because even, selections never stops for any of us, really. When we got on a team, it didn't stop. You, you were still being assessed and selected by your team members, man. Can I live up to the guy to my left and right, you know? Uh, it, it does. It didn't stop for us. So, the, the 21 years that JC's in, eight years, the 10 years, the 20 years that we've all got, Aaron, Arbosa, LDB, and myself. Plus, it never stopped. We, the selection continued. It continued in various degrees, but it never stopped. You know, for the, the folks that come here, you know, this is this is 48 hours. We, we're taking 48 hours. We're, we're compressing a lifetime into that. And it, it, it brings us all into a dark place. You know, like we all said, hey, last night, I, I, boom, I was out. The only other event that probably does that for me truly is like when we do the 9-11s. Yeah. That's, a, that's hard, you know. We, we, so that, that's hard for us for us. It's what probably got us all, most of, some of us all together. Um, that's what I mean. You know, um, but it is selection is a dark event it is a dark event and I don't, I don't know if you know you sometimes you you know I do the debriefing on, on some of these folks you know I'm a little bit teary eyed when I, I see some especially some of them you know, like you think wow right and you look at them but, and they're emotional right because this is an emotional event but it's a dark event it, it, it's a dark event so you have to know that and Roger probably equated it best you know, the abdominal spirit, it's a good thing, but it is, it, go, it does make it go dark. It makes you think of the sacrifices that, that we had to make. You know, we say it in there, you know, speed, violence of action, you know, surprise. Surprise us with your indomitable will. Give us that speed, give us that violence. It's a hard thing for some people to obtain. I think you have the, me the measurable things that are the standard. Those ones are the easy ones, like PT tests, the run, like that's your time. These are your weights. This is the rep count, what you're supposed to do. But then I think there are points in the event where, uh, where it shifts and you see the standard. I mean, your refusal to quit. You, like you see this candidate, if I see you still wavering, you're, you're dancing on, like you're, you haven't hit the standard. Like if I, if I see you on this side of the fence and you're, you're taking in the things that I'm saying to you, like you've already, in my head, you've already not met the standard. You've already quit on yourself. It's just a waiting game at this point. And every single time you see them not end up making it. But then sometimes you might see someone who, uh, like Roger said, the best way I've ever heard to put that indomitable spirit. You look at them; it doesn't matter what you throw at them; it doesn't matter what you do to them. The, in the in their heart, in their head, they've already decided you could kill me here. I'm not quitting. So, if you're going to say if there's a standard, it's the in, indomitable spirit that is the standard, and we pick that out. I'm sorry. Oh no, I mean, um, you know that standard. It, it, People want to be able to objectify things, right. you know. But we all know, like, there's something special in certain people. And we're trying to conjure that here with selection. And that's what, what, what we mean by the standard, you know. And we're, 
uh, cadres or we're on teams within special operations. We're trying to find that special glow in a human being. And really it's just the commitment beyond someone's mortality. Like they're committed beyond their physical limitations that, uh, you know, despite pain, injury, you know, sacrifice, the commitment exceeds what any of us could ever think up to test them within a 48 hour period. That's what the standard is, that you can't touch that, you know. And that's, that's what we want to feel, that's what we're here to celebrate, you know. And, and uh, you know, that's, that's a human being fully realized. You know, the potential, the, the ultimate potential of a human being is in, is in their heart and in their spirit, in their soul, you know. And uh, this is, you know, a celebration of what's possible. But we want to see that. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, you know, people, they'll prepare physically. You know, we've touched all around. They'll touch, prepare physically, just like at the Olympics, right? Mm -hmm. You know, at the Olympics, people will prepare physically very the same. Like all of those athletes that show up to a 100-meter dash. Like they've all really prepared physically about the same. But it's that mental difference when they show up, you know. I mean, uh, you know, you see it, guys. You know, they travel. You know, you stub your toe, all these weird things happen. You know, how come, you know, you probably did 65 push-ups. You know, this is a horrible example. You probably did 65 push-ups with your, with your kids counting them in your living room. But, you know, you show up here and it's different. Why is that different? You know, it's because your, you're, you know, your resolve is being tested. You know, that, that all these unknowns start coming out. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's just one of those things like your commitment to what you're doing needs to exceed your mortality. To have that glow, you know, and that's that's where I really feel it is. Cool. Thank hey, you so, guys. Uh, but use this example or, or use a different one. But I think it's actually what is the actual difference between? Okay, I'll give you the tells. Like, what are the? T why is it so easy to see? If this isn't this isn't like some dark shame in arts. Like, this is so obvious. And we talked to. We, we talked to the, the, both the two final girls about it was um, she was kept doing this with her hands when she was in line, right? Well, what happens? You're, you're, you're starting to get in a dark place. Your shoulders round forward. You're going like this. You can just sense it. You can sense. You always talk about this. Like when your eyes are faced on the horizon, that, that means you're, you're in a position of strength. They teach us that. Because they teach you to not exude weakness. This is weakness. You can see it. You can see it. You can smell it. And then, and then at the very end, talk about, I mean, the second before Rachel quit, I was like, the extra bonus category right here is that demon raging in your head. Like, it was so obvious because she was ignoring the cadre. She stopped moving. She was on her knees begging for us to just quit. Like, I mean... So th these, these grandiose notions are great and, and they're all accurate. It's just, why is it so easy? And, and what are the other tells? You can use those if you want. So in the, be in the beginning, yeah. it's really easy because we have yeah. the masses and we can judge an individual's performance yeah. based off of what everybody else is doing. Yeah. So at one point when we had three GRTs left, uh, 0713 and 20, you know, we can easily see that 07 is not maintaining the standard because 13 and 20, they can keep the ruck over their head and they're just locked out. And when 07 is dropping, it's like, all right, well, you're not meeting the standard of everybody else in this event. So clearly this isn't here for you. And then when we get down to the individual level to identify the standard, it's just constant forward progress. It's not, you know, as you were describing, like shielding and protecting yourself from outside elements. It's standing tall, being proud, saying, you know what, like, you could shoot me in the face and I'm still going to get up from this. Like you could blow my legs off and I'm still going to fucking walk through this. Like, and that's the stuff where it's like, what's the standard? You know, to me personally, what I believe is constant forward movement, you know, and it's not showing weakness. It's, oh, this is what this is. This is what the task is. Okay, vet, like all day long, all night long, constant forward movement. And no matter what's said or no matter what elemental factors are coming down on top of you it's just that constant progress and even if you get reset and you've got to go back a mile it makes no difference because to you you're just you have this stoicism within you that once it's at the individual if it gets to the individual point like we've seen now a couple of times that person is just so i don't want to say internal but they're so in tuned to everything about them going on that nothing matters except that constant forward progression and that i believe is the standard you know everybody else it's easy to judge because we can base 
certain individuals off of the masses and clearly pick you out like a sore thumb. But when it gets to the individual level, it really goes to show, you know, do you have what it takes to continue moving even after you're completely broken down, you know, mentally, physically, emotionally, and maybe even at a point where you're just beyond spiritual. You're just, yeah. hey, I have me, myself, and I'm just going to continue to push forward because that's what it is I came here to do. That's the thing. Well, there's that, there's that one thing that ties all the selection finishers together, uh, whether or not where they're from doesn't matter, how much they prepare doesn't matter. That one thing is that they didn't fucking quit. Mm -hmm. Is that the thing? The one thing. You can't go through and pass selection if you quit. Doesn't matter you know, how strong you are, uh, how fast you can run, how much you can lift. That's the one thing. To make it through, you can't quit. And unfortunately for this class, that's what differentiated 1-3 and 2-0 from continuing on past 24 hours. Is that at one point they, okay, I, I don't want to be here anymore. So when you walk through the, the final, maybe you, JC, I mean, you were kind of taking lead on, on the final. It's like before, walk us through up to that moment where Rachel said, I'm done. And like how you watched, you, like that was like watching a car crash. You could just yeah. watch, like, okay, from the time that, at, that Ali quit, it's like, and walk us through that because it's, it's, a, it's a tangible thing. You can smell it, you can see it, and you're just, it's just a waiting game. Yeah, like, you know, down to the final two with, you know, Ross can of two zero up in the front and one three in the rear and, you know, doing the the last evolution. And uh, and then when, when one three, I could, I could tell as she, she was falling back more and more, I could see it in her eyes. She just knew, and I didn't have to say anything, except just tell her to keep exercising. And she just knew that she wasn't going to catch, catch up. So she ultimately, you know, BW'd. And then I walked over 2-0. And once I whispered to her that it was just her, I could see all the energy that she had had at the beginning. It just declined. Because then she kind of in her head. Now it wasn't competition it was a competition the standard was no longer a standard about us it was a standard that she was holding inside her right so she's telling herself in her mind okay am i holding the standard now being by myself you know we could say all day long they're not holding the standard but that's just us you know just talking we're just talking but as we keep going and me having to tell her the exact exercise and her slowing down in the sign of hands on knees, head down, not looking forward. In her mind, I know she's telling herself when she wants to quit. Like she's already telling me that she's going to quit soon, whether it's here or the next sandbag carry or the next sandbag carry. I knew it was going to happen because she did not want to be there by herself. She knew that there was, it was the demon inside her, like you said. It was, it, it was the, it was the ex-cadre in her head. All we were simply doing is just telling her, chest the bag, clean the bag, push press the bag, throw the bag over. That's all we were simply saying. And cadre X inside her head said, do I want to do this for another 24, 25 hours? I don't think so. I really don't. It's two things that come to play. And I said earlier that other selection candidates try to compare themselves to the person to the left or right. And again, you can't compare yourself to the person to the left or right. Because one, you don't know why they're there or their physical attributes. And you said earlier about like a, uh, a play on like what this compared to our, other our selections. Well, we, in SFAS, we had the gulag, right? Remember, or the shack of shame. Mm -hmm. And you would almost like at me, I know that when I saw somebody go to Shack of, shack of Shame, I took power from that because I, I was taking it. I was like, it's here, victory. you know, I'm a victor. He's, he's, he's done, but I'm going to be, I'm going to remain. Didn't care what they were doing during the individual phase. I didn't care how they, if they were outperforming me or talking bravado. But when they took that, 
walk, and you can see that, you'd be like, power. The selection candidates, like in, in Two Zero's case, she didn't take that. She should have used that energy and said, hey, I'm, I'm, now I'm the lone one. Okay, bring it on, bring it on. But that, that doesn't happen. Yeah, the ability to outperform um, sustained her to the point you know, that when no one was there, she wasn't prepared right. to be alone with that. But maybe that's that you know we you know we talked before she left yesterday a very uh, personal conversation of just um, you know because that whole night and, and you know I think the reason that, that you know we have this job we're very good at understanding all of these subjective things and on the beach all night before uh, you know right at that changeover just all night I was whispering I'm like I'm the voice inside your head I'm talking to you right now and I'm using all of those those tools to try to find that weakness. But uh, uh, she was obviously very strong and, and we could debate all day if she could have physically completed the 48 hours, uh, but she was unprepared to be alone, you know? And she was very, I mean, she was taking power off of outperforming the other candidates mm -hmm. up to that point. But when that's gone, oh shit, now it's all inflection. Yep. You know, and that's, that's the difficult thing, I think, about this event, you know, I mean, uh, and that's a great point. I mean, it's that's one of the things that really defines this uh, for the people that have paid the cost to be at that moment. You know, we could uh, armchair quarterback that all day mm -hmm. long, but that is a very difficult position to be in. Right. You know, and that's what makes this you know what we consider one of the hardest endurance events in the world. You know, it just it's nothing else can you know create that except that moment right there. Mm -hmm. You know. When I was uh, doing the lap, uh, final walk over to um, Dutton Island, uh, Canner 1-3, uh, I was falling back on the walk. I went back and talked to her, um, asked her, if you were to make a decision right now between you and Canner 2-0, who's gonna win this? And she said, based on this event right now, 2-0. Like that immediately told me she's already out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was that, ver that verbal statement of her basically accepting that defeat um, I would argue that she didn't actually quit on Dutton Island, that that was the moment where mm -hmm. she, she did. And then continuing on watching uh, two zero feed, she was feeding off of like that. She was feeding off the wind. Um, we actually uh, had a long stoplight and Canada one three actually caught up. And I told one three, this is your chance to keep up and two zero, like you could feel her energy, like get me back in the front. <laughs> and she like, she took off and got that lead right back. Um, going to the, uh, the final evolution, um, the, uh, um, the sandbag carry and burpees, uh, you watch candidate one, three quit. We were about probably 20 meters ahead uh, with candidate two zero. And you watch candidate two zero look back at one, three, talking to the cadre because they had quit and you you watched her eyes go from the sandbag and watched up and they mm. stuck there and that lingered a little too long and mm. i would argue that that was the moment where she had that internal conflict of i won but you didn't win the, i told her that the standard is now you you have to be yourself and I don't think she ever made that, she clearly never made that mental switch to compete against herself now. Last year we had a similar, obviously, um, situation where the last 24 hours was Chad versus Chad and the cadre. And that is definitely a tough place to be in, but you know what I mean? He, uh, he was in the right mental uh, setting. He didn't care. You throw everything you got at me, I'm gonna be here when it's over. And that's what you have to do. You have to have that, you know, it, it, it is a competition, sure. But when it's just you, uh, what are you gonna do now? The standard has several layers in it. There are a lot of quantifiable measurements in, in, in the standard, in selection. As Andy mentioned, you know, we've got the APFT, we've got the 12 mile rough, and there's other things in there that are very, essentially gates. You either meet the requirement, the time, or you're gone. But there's also tangibles and intangibles that are 
layered within selection that make up the standard. And all of the evolutions that the candidates go through are all pre-planned. They're not made up on the fly. It's very organized, it's very detailed as far as how much work they're doing at what time and what they're carrying and what they're doing. And that's all designed around breaking individuals. And that's all going to happen at different points because everybody's breaking point is different. And our job is to find that breaking point and then start looking for those intangibles that's going to tell us, is this person going to be a finisher? Or is this person just here until they quit? And we start seeing those things and they've all talked about what those look like. And Jason's talked about what those intangibles look like. That's what the standard is. You know, the standard isn't something that can be defined. It can't be grabbed. It can't be written down. Um, but it, it exists. It's out there. And we know it when we see it because we've all felt it. We've all been around it. Um, and we can see it in the eyes of the individuals. And we're not pitting one candidate against the other. Um, that's not the standard. The standard is, do you have what it takes to not quit, to not give up on yourself? to overcome, to persevere. That's the internal standard that we're trying to get to that each candidate has to find within themselves to continue moving forward. Sometimes we see it, unfortunately, with yesterday's class we didn't, but that's the standard.